called him aside and said, uh, you go to Ruckman School? And he said, yes. He said, you're following a man. Well, what of it? He said, well, do you believe what Ruckman believes about the Bible? And he said, uh, yeah. He said, do I? He said, well, do you believe the Bible is in there? It doesn't have any errors, right? And the fellow said, yes. And he said, you're following a man. Ruckman taught you that. And this kid said, do you believe it does have errors in it? And he said, yes. And this kid said, who taught you that? <laughs> you can't beat that thing with a stick. Amen. You've got to be talked out of your belief in that book. For something like, uh, something like about 40 years, I've uh, had in the bulletin a challenge for any man to tell me where he first lost his faith in the King James Bible when he used to believe it and nobody's ever written in yet. You know what they want you to think? They want you to think the Holy Spirit showed them the mistakes in that book. Yeah. Well, he didn't. A man did. Amen. And I believe about that book. And I'm, I'm no stripling. I taught Hebrew and Greek for eight years. And I studied under a fellow who was a Ph.D. from Edinburgh and Heidelberg, uh, Bob Jones, and I studied my Greek teacher, was Dr. Bruner from Louisville Seminary. He could critique A.T. Roberts' Greek grammar. You know I believe about that book? Just what your grandmother believed about that book if she was saved. Amen. They say, Ruckman this and Ruckman that. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't mess you up. The Holy Spirit messed you up. <laughs> How many of you believe that Bible is the Word of God before you ever heard of me? Let me see your hands. Then who mess you up? <laughs> you know it was the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will bear witness to that text. All right, now if you have a Bible, turn to Romans 14. And some of you folks have been up down the country and heard me preach before. You're going to get an old one here. You probably heard a half a dozen times. But this is a new bunch here. You're in with the day, and they need to hear it. So <laughs> they're going to hear it. And uh, Romans chapter 14. We're going to talk about verse 12. Romans chapter 14, verse 12. When I first began to preach, all my messages were down south. I preached in Louisiana and uh, Georgia and North South Carolina and Alabama, Mississippi, through there. And I heard Southerners use one alibi for rejecting Christ so often that I thought it was indigenous to the Southland. Then I got preaching up in Ohio and Michigan, Pennsylvania and Vermont and places, and then they used the same alibi up there they used down south. Now, I don't know how much personal work you do. But if you do any personal work, and you run to this thing where, are you saved? And the fellow says, well, now, now, preacher, no use trying to lie to you. <laughs> I don't know why they say that. I never asked the guy to lie. <laughs> but he said, no use trying to lie. No use trying to lie, preacher. I don't live like I live. And I'll tell you, I don't, I'm no Christian, but I'll tell you one thing. I'm no hypocrite like a lot of these hypocrites in the church. No, sir, if I ever get saved, I'm going to live it. I'm going to live it. How many ever heard that? Let me see your hands. Well, they do it up north. They like it down the south. I'm going to live it. And they're always worried about the hypocrites in the church. And that's the, I'm there hypocrites in another place beside a church, but they're always worried about the hypocrites in the church. Well, all those folks in the church, they profess to be something. Well, the people outside the church profess to be something too, and it's not always genuine. I talked to a fellow about his soul one time. He was a, a, a gasoline station attendant. And I was talking to him in and out between him going in and out pumping gas back in the days when they used to wait on you. And uh, he kept saying, well, there are too many hypocrites in the church, and I'm not going to be a hypocrite, and there are too many hypocrites in the church, and all this stuff, and that's why his alibi was for not getting saved. And after about a half an hour of that, I got tired of it, and he said, well, there's too many hypocrites in the church. And I said, I can tell you one place where there's more hypocrites than in a church. He said, where's that? I said, a gas station. <laughs> 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 he didn't have any sense of humor at all, you know. Some folks don't have any sense of humor. Now, they always think the other fellow's a hypocrite. You know what I said? You go into home and they believe in mixed bathing, they talk about the hypocrites that smoke. Yes. Then you go home and they smoke, they talk about the hypocrites that play cards. Then you go over and they play cards, talk about the hypocrites that drink. Then you go over and they drink, they talk about the hypocrites that believe in mixed bathing. It'd be refreshing to go into home sometime and have the fellow say, I'm a hypocrite. <laughs> but you never get that. You never get that. I, I, I carry a $20 bill with me most of the time, $20 bill with me, and I'm just waiting for some guy to say, I'm a hypocrite, but I never heard it yet. A lady came to a friend of mine, his name is Cotton Mercer, he's a, a southern evangelist down there. She had a big, big dip of tube rose in her mouth. You don't know what that is, that's snuff. And she had a big dip of tube rose in her mouth. She said, she had, what does a scripture mean that says, whatever is not a faith is sin? <laughs> you know. <laughs> he looked at her and said, well, what do you think it means? And she said, well, if I don't mean going to the ball game on Sunday, I don't know what it do means. <laughs> what kind of thing? <laughs> So you always get that thing with the other fella. Now, you take this guy right here. I'm just an unsaved man here. 
I'm going to have him dressed in the filthy rags of his own self-righteousness. And I come up to him and I say, pardon me, sir, you saved? Well, preacher, now before you go talking to me, he said, you go down the block there and talk to old Sam Smith down there. He's a Methodist and he and me both drink out of the same bottle. <laughs> and I say, well, I'll go down and talk to him. So I come alongside this fellow down the block and I say, pardon me, sir, you saved? Well, uh, I'll do the best I can. Well, I said, the best you can do is trust Christ your Savior. Have you done that? Oh, yeah, I've done that. I've done that. Well, then you're saved. Well, yeah, I profess to be saved. I say, good, good, good. I mean, this fellow here is a, he may be saved. He's a little bit stout. A little bit stout. <laughs> he's, a, he's a beer belongs, enjoy it, people, you know. Get me a light and all that kind of stuff. You keep on drinking beer, you look like you swallowed an air hose, man. <laughs> And I stop this guy and I say, oh, you say, well, I profess to be. Well, he's a professing Christian. What is a professing Christian? What does he profess? Well, he professed to be clad in a long white robe, uh, treading the pilgrim pathway on his way home to heaven. I say, what you got in your hand there? Oh, uh, just a little hot toddy. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong, I'm no, I'm no drunkard, you know. I don't, I don't, I'm not a drunkard, you know. I'm, you know, it's a little, little, you know, rum Collins, Tom Collins sidecar. Boxcar, Manhattan, Martini, Singapore, swing, slow gin fish, you know, Cuba believer. You know, just, just a little bit, you know, Christmas, you know, and Fourth of July, and Thanksgiving, New Year's Eve, and <laughs> Groundhog Day, and all that kind of thing. But don't get, but don't get me wrong, I'm no, I'm no drunkard, I can take it or leave it. Sam Jones said a man who would take it or leave it would take it every time he got a chance. <laughs> oh, I thought fellow's a professing Christian. You say, can you be a Christian and drink that stuff? I don't know, it says he is. He said, I don't think a fellow can drink that stuff and be saved. Well, it's a free country. You said, you mean he could be saved? He says he is. You said, I believe he's saved? I don't know, it beats the fire out of me. He says he is. If he is, there he is. There he is, if he is. Now, you know what the book says? The book says, uh, whatever you do in word or deed, do all the glory of God. Uh, what you're, you don't know, you're not your body, the temple of the Holy Ghost, which you have of God. You're not your own, you're bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body, your spirit, with your gods. Can you glorify God in your body with that stuff? Well, it says, yes, okay. Chug a lug, man. Bottoms up. Prose, boy. Skull, drink it down. <laughs> Amen. Well, come on, folks. If it's right, do it. Amen. Okay, if it's right, do it. People say, weird, you know, arguing about stuff. What's right and wrong? Hey, man, if it's right, do it. If it's wrong, quit it. If, if it's wrong, quit it. If you can't quit it, kick yourself around the block. Don't get mad at me. <laughs> People are funny about preachers. So I wouldn't talk like that if I was you. Well, you ain't me. That's why I'm talking. You're listening. <laughs> <laughs> now listen, if it's right, do it. Don't get upset about it. I don't think that preacher will shut your mouth, man. If it's right, do it. And if it's wrong, quit it. Well, I don't know what's right, but wrong. Oh, shut up. You make me sick. You mean to tell me you're a grown man, 20, 30, 40 years old, and you can't find out what's right and what's wrong? Who are you trying to kid? Your grandmother? All you got to do is go back in a room someplace, get in your knees, and say, God, I want to know what's right or wrong. You know in less than five seconds. And you know it. If it's right, do it. If it's wrong, quit it. That's all there is to that. All right. Uh, pardon me, madam. Are you saved? Uh, uh, I'm a Methodist. <laughs> what are you, a saved Methodist or a lost Methodist? <laughs> Well, I'm saved, of course, of course, I'm not a Christian. I'm not a, I'm not a pagan. I say, you're a Christian then? Yes, I'm a Christian. I say, well, good, well, good, well, just, just checking, just checking. I said, uh, 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 what do you got in your hand there? Oh, uh, spades, clubs, hearts, diamonds, deuces wild. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I'm no gambler, you know. No five card draw, seven card stud. No, just a little game, you know, canasta, you know. Bridge, Rook, you know, hearts. <laughs> you Yankees, you're getting quiet on man. On, <laughs> you lose your sense of humor there somewhere? What are you worried about? You say, I think it's right? Okay, deal. <laughs> What's the problem? You keep making a problem out of something in there. If I'm ringing your number, answer the phone. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I mean, it's right or it's wrong. She said, well, she's saved and she's a Christian. Can a Christian, you know, be a Christian and play cards? Uh, I don't know. If she is, if she is, there she is. If she is one, there she's, she is. 
says, I don't believe a person can play a card. Well, you're entitled to your belief. Now listen, don't you go out of here after this service this morning and say, now, Brother Huff had a preacher down there said, everybody played cards that are going to hell. I didn't say that. <laughs> don't lie like that. You lie like a dog. I didn't say that. And I didn't say she was saved either. <laughs> You say, what do you say? You're kind of in depth at this morning, Ruckman. <laughs> well, I say, if she's saved, there she is. Uh, you know what that book says? That book says, whatever you do in the word or deed, do all the glory of God, giving thanks to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you understand that? Whatsoever you do, whatever you do, in word or deed, do all the glory of God, giving thanks to the Father in the name of Jesus Christ. Can you do that for the glory of God and thank God for it? You say, I can Okay, deal. You don't have to get upset. If it's right, do it. Amen? Come on, folks, amen? <laughs> if it's right, do it. If it's wrong, quit it. If you can't quit it, kick thine own self. Don't kick me. <laughs> I mean, just if you do it right, then there's... Oh, thank you. Bless this dear Lord. Give me a good hand. Cut. Thank you. <laughs> Blackjack, praise the Lord. You know what I mean? <laughs> I bet, I bet you've never been in a game of 21 or bust like that in your life, have you? I don't think you have. Uh, pardon me, sir, you saved. Am I saved? <laughs> yeah, you saved. Well, young man, I know more about the Bible. You know about if you live be a thousand. I know about an antelagomal, a homologomal, and a pseudopigraph, and I know they've ever seen transubstantiation, and consubstantiation, and the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of heaven. What do you mean, am I saved? Well, I said, I just wondered you had your collar on there backwards, and I don't know whether you're saved or not, you know. <laughs> Well, he might be saved. He might just have a dirty collar or two. You never can tell. <laughs> now, I say, uh, 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 what do you got in your hand there? Old ASV, new ASV, uh, Living Bible, Phillips, Berkeley, Moffat, Weymouth, Goodspeed, a new international version, nutty idiots version, a national saphead revision. <laughs> say, uh, not listen, don't you go out here and say, Ruckman said, everybody... Uh, Everybody believes the King James Bible, the only word of God is saved, and everybody doesn't believe it's King James Bible, the word of God is unsaved. I didn't say that. Go on and say, Ruckman says, you can't be saved without a King James Bible. Blah, 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 blah. You know what you're talking about. You're just lying like a dog. You can find how to get saved in any Bible. I've read people of Christ out of a Catholic Bible, a Jehovah's Witness Bible. There's enough truth in any Bible to lead somebody to Christ, which means what? It don't mean nothing. It doesn't mean they're Bibles. You lead a man to Christ with a tract. You don't even have to have a Bible. You know what's wrong with some of the brethren? They think if you find a diamond in a sewer, that means the sewer is a jewelry store. <laughs> That's what they think. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. <laughs> they think you find $5 in a dumpster, the dumpster is a bank. <laughs> Any Bible has enough in it telling how to get a fellow out to get saved. Why, we used to lead them to Christ with a wordless book. How many have heard of a wordless book? Let me see your hands. Why, those guys, they don't find them around much anymore. But that's just four pieces of paper with nothing on them. You lead them to Christ for that. Now, don't you get me wrong here. You say, well, I don't, you got so narrow-minded about that? No, I'm not narrow-minded. I don't care what Bible you use. I'm an American. Use any Bible you want to use. I don't care about what you that's, use. Them all, that's your problem. <laughs> I'm, I'm just not going to take up any Bible to degrade Jesus Christ. I'm not going to fool any Bible over at Jesus Christ like a New King James Version, which calls him God's servant instead of God's child in the book of Acts. I'm not going to put a fool in a book that removes the command in that Bible to study. There's only one verse in your Bible that tells you to study the Bible. That's 2 Timothy 2.15. It's not in a New King James Bible. Because the New King James Bible ain't a King James Bible. It's a piece of junk. Now, if you want to fool it, okay, man, okay. I mean, it's free country. I'm an American. I mean, I'm a real American. Boy, if I had a radio station, I'd like to put a put on a KKK for half an hour and then black Muslims right after them. <laughs> Amen, brother. And then put on the Pope right after that and then Mays Jackson and Bob Jones Sr. right after that. Put on the Minutemen, you know, and then put on the International Bankers. <laughs> then right then put on a Charismatic and then put on a Wick of Witchcraft. And then put uh, put uh, Mayor Jackson or, or Charlie Fuller right in after him like that. I believe in freedom. You take it my church, uh, we don't have any sign behind the pulpit. Up there at Bob Jones uh, University, they have a sign behind the pulpit where you can't see it. And it says, please use only the King James Bible in this pulpit. What do you got that for? You trying to con somebody? 
I don't have one of those in my pulpit. I've had guys come to my church and use an AASB to preach out of. When I didn't even, you know, I, I don't believe that stuff, but they, they got up there and preached before I could stop them. And I just, what did I do? I didn't get up and scream, heresy, heresy, heresy. That's my Lord and Lord. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I'll let the fellow dig his own grave, man. <laughs> if you came to my church and preached out of any Bible, but a King James Bible, you'd find quickly you were in the wrong pew. The first time you quoted a verse, you'd see my people go, <laughs> that have your number real quick. I don't care what it is, but just don't lie about it. You know why people get so upset about Ruffman? I call them liars, nothing they can do about it. They couldn't take me to court, I'd beat the britches off. I call them liars because they're liars. And they know the liars. They'll stand in that pulpit and say, this Bible is the Word of God, this Bible doesn't contain the Word of God, it is the Word of God, this is the verbally inspired Word of God, this is Scripture, thus say it the Scripture, come down out and say, but this verse shouldn't be here and that, and a better translation here, and it's unfortunate that, yeah, you lie in the pulpit, you liar. Say, what you going to do about it? You ain't going to know nothing about it. You're going to be called what you are, and you're going to stick with it. And then you're going to stay with you. You take uh, you take an Eon Pace, and Eon Pace is a fire eater. He's a fire eater. He's a uh, North Ulster Irishman. And he's, he took on taking on the Irish Republican Army for years. He went to that uh, parliament in France and, and put a, bought a sign there that said, The Pope's the Antichrist. <laughs> take guts to do that. You know what that Take guts to do that. But then sometimes his guts fail him. He's over there in England. He's going through the Spurgeon Memorial Tabernacle there with Larry and Bill Bartlett, uh, Beach and Vicks' grandsons. And I, I bought, bought, came up those boys and bought them up with the King James Bible. We used to play water polo with them there at Chautauqua years ago. I've been playing, I've been playing hockey now with, uh, with the grandsons of the preachers I was playing with then. I'm a goalie. I'm a goalie. I won two out of three last Wednesday night. <laughs> I've played, I've played 600 games since I was 60. I didn't get on the skates till I was 60. I played about 600 games. And those fellows there, they're, Grandma, those grandsons now, big, big men, they're 40 and 50 years old. And they've gone to that Moody's Tabernacle there with, uh, with, uh, uh, Paisley. And one of them said, uh, 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 do you ever read any Ruckman stuff? And he said, oh, yes, yes, I've read Dr. Ruckman. And they said, well, what do you think about his view in the King James Bible? And he said, oh, he's absolutely right. He said, but don't tell Dr. Bob I said that. You warn about somebody associating you with Ruckman, are you? You think you got guts? You got lace on your bridges. Amen, boy. Amen. 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 There are two kinds of guts. There's physical guts and there's spiritual guts. And when some of the brethren come to spiritual guts, they haven't got nothing in them. Amen, Amen brother. All right now. Uh, pardon me. Are you saved? Uh, oh, yes. It's the only way to be. <laughs> oh, good, good. What happened to your hair there? Did you get run over by a lawnmower or something? <laughs> <laughs> you go to sleep in the barber's chair. <laughs> you know this kind, you know. Hollywood says, cut it off, and off it goes. Hollywood says, let it grow, it starts growing again. Hollywood says, pick them up, up they come. Hollywood says, let them down, down they go. You know that kind. I heard Bob Jonas Seeger say one time, he said, he said, the, the person in this life who is a success is the person who finds out what God wants him to do and does it. And I believe that. But well, that's a very uh, tragic saying because you know what it means? It means most, most young people in America will never find out what God wants them to do. You say, why? Because the verse says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercy of God, to present you a body of living sacrifice, so accept to God, which is your reasonable service, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And that text says, before it says that, it says, be not conformed to this world. Now, most of you young people don't amount to anything. You're right, preacher. You say, why? You're going to conform. Yep. Peer pressure. You're going to go along with them. And that book says you can't find the will of God for your life if you're going to go with the world. You know this kind, you know. I mean, what do you got in your hand? Oh, stage screen romance. Boy loves a girl. Girl loves a boy. She lost her heart. He got his, her heart. She got his heart. I lost my heart. It's running around here someplace. Can't find the thing. All that kind of stuff. <laughs> No soap opera, you know, screen star, stage and movie. TV or not TV, that is the question. <laughs> now listen, don't you go out of here and say, Ruckman said, everybody got a child here and said, going to hell. Because <laughs> I didn't say that. 
And don't you say I said it was all right for Christians. He said, what are you saying? I'm saying if he's, she's saying, there she is. What that book says? That book said the light of the body is the eye. If the eye is single, the body is full of light. If the eye is dark, uh, evil, the, bi- the, bi- the body is full of darkness. TV is ten times as dangerous as radio. Because you always remember what you see more than what you hear. And if you want to know why a lot of you lost the power in your life, it's because you're going along with the world. You're trying to be like the world. And God isn't going to use you. Now, I have a TV set at home, big 21-inch job. And the two rules about the television in my home, number one, nobody watches it. <laughs> 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 it isn't hooked up to any channels that has no aerial. It's only for uh, videos and Nintendo games. <laughs> and that way, I get to see everything that comes into my house. My kids watch. I see it before they see it. And if it comes in wrong, it goes out in the, in the garbage. Uh, yeah, I like Nintendo. I, I, like, uh, I always did like Super Mario 3. You say, well, that's, that's, that's wrong. Not for me. It isn't right for me. <laughs> if it's right, do it. Amen. If I didn't think it was right, I'd quit it. You can't beat that thing with a stick. If it's right, there'll be things right for me that aren't right for you. There'll be things right for you that aren't right for me. How many of you drink coffee before you go to bed at night? Let me see your hands. Coffee before you go to bed at night? Boy, you ain't much coffee drinkers. Down south, you get 50 hands on that. How many, uh, how many drink more than three cups a day? Let me see your hands. All right. Now, if I drank three cups a day, I'd be up Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. <laughs> I mean, if I took a glass of iced tea at night at 7 o'clock, I'm good till, till 6 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it's wrong for me to do that. But it ain't wrong for you. People know me. I don't have to convince you. If people know me, they, they'd tell you if you ever had any experience with them. They know that if I thought a thing was right... I would do it no matter what anybody thought. I mean anybody, the body of Christ. I wouldn't care what they said. I'd just ignore them. If I thought it was right, I'd do it. If it's right, do it. Wrong, don't do it. If you can't quit it, kick yourself around the block. TV or not TV, that is the question. I was in the home one time with an unsafe fella. And he had a boy just been called to preach. He was about 50 years old, and his son was about, oh, he was about 30, had been preaching about three or four years, and his, the son said, fellow wasn't saved yet. And his boy had been praying for him all that time. And uh, it, while I was eating there at the table with the family, a couple of fellows came in, and they came in, and uh, they uh, took out the TV. And uh, I was taking the TV out. I said, uh, you getting the TV fixed? He said, uh, No. Wait a little bit, and I said, you getting a new one? He said, no. And I said, well, you trading in for another one? And he said, no. So I shut up, you know. And he said, you want to know what I'm having done with that? I said, yeah, what you having done with it? <laughs> and he said, the preacher said, before I got that thing, I had a family. Now my kids got to have glasses. They won't go outdoors and play. They're late coming to the table. They're nervous and have nightmares at night. I had me a family before I got that blankety-blank thing, and I'm going to have me one again. <laughs> and I went the window. <laughs> That, that, that unsaved guy had more sense than some saved people. After World War I, a lot of people came back there, and around 1950, that television began to go. One of the first series of things they put on it was combat. Not all the World War II vets, you know, get watching that thing, have nightmares. And one friend of mine had a, he'd wake, wake up, you know, at night, yelling, you know, standing on the bed and everything, and one night he was dreaming. He and his wife were lying there, and she was sound asleep, and he was dreaming. He was dreaming he was going up a hill shooting a BAR. And the BIR fires upward. It has a gas uh, uh, system in it, uh, uh, but, the, but it, it, the recoil is forward instead of backward. It'll it'll rise up on you. You take a clip and put it in here, and then you fire and put it here and fire. He's going up this hill, attacking a place, and he pulls out a clip and slaps it there, and, bah, 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 and then pull out a clip. And bah, 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 bah. The third clip he pulled out, I heard of this scream, woke him up, and it was his wife. And he just pulled another curler out of her hair. <laughs> 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 now I must, I, I must admit, I must admit, when, I, when I'm away to meet like that, I'll check television, television and go across it. There are two things I'll watch on television, prize fights and hockey, and the rest I don't have anything about. I think baseball is the dullest game I've ever seen in my life outside of chess. <laughs> 
and a bas and a basketball game put me to sleep, man. A basketball, you, you get more, you get more action in a game of golf. I mean, beep 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 beep, beep tweet shoot, beep beep beep, beep beep tweet shoot, beep beep beep, beep, beep. stop the guy. <laughs> Did you ever hear the hockey score of forty to thirty? <laughs> you know why you don't? Because you can stop the sucker. You can stop him. <laughs> Uh, they better have to make me commissioner of sports. I'd pick some of these things up, boy. I'd make them interesting. In, in basketball, you can trip him. Yeah, man. Don't let him go down there, point, point. Trip the sucker. He ain't going to hurt him or fall on board. Won't hurt his little knees. Bob, drop him, man. Have no rule when he jumps up. You can grab by the ankle when he jumps, see? The guy's going to spike that. <laughs> well, the game action, man. You know, that, that dull stuff. I mean, baseball, all that goes. <laughs> and the manager goes out there on the mound. How you doing, Joe? Pretty good. You're going to come over for a little bit of cookies uh, Saturday night? Yeah, we got them over there. That sure was good stuff. What, what, a, what a thing. Out of the watch the play. That's the way. Good boy. That's how you got it. You're okay, buddy. You're okay. You're okay. You're okay. Nice play. Nice catch. That's the way to look him over. I never sent the game a bull shooting in all my life. Just talk, talk. Now you give me that game, I'll fix it so the, so I'll fix it so the shortstop can tackle the guy if he's, he's going between second and third, and, and, the, and, the, and the guy throwing can hit the, if he can hit the pitcher with his bat on the third pitch, he can take the base. And <laughs> now I have a fix so that, that instead of throwing the guy at the base, you, you, you hit the guy, see? <laughs> You take the ball and lead the guy and hit him while he's running, then he's, then he's out. <laughs> I mean, he's out. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All right, now, look here. Pardon me, sir. You say, oh, yes, sir, glory to God, hallelujah, blessed the, 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 the Lamb, praise Jesus. Glory to God, I went down the altar and prayed through, uh, again, the Holy Spirit, God baptized in the Holy Spirit, glory to God, hallelujah. I said, you pray through to God or the devil? I pray through to God, of course, of course, why? I said, I don't know, just checking. <laughs> what do you got in your mouth? Oh, uh, have a tamper, red knot, you know, Chesterfield, Camel, you know, Philip Morris, you know, kind of thing. Now listen, don't you go out there and say, Ruckman said, everybody that smokes is going to hell. I didn't say that. Don't you go out there and say, if it's all right for Christian to smoke, I didn't say that. I say, what did you say? I said, if you say, there is. I mean, now what, what would you think of me if I lit up we, out when we got through here this morning? You say, well, you're a preacher. Oh, don't give me that jazz. Don't give me that. Okay? Corinthians isn't written to preachers. It's written to Christians. And it says, what? No, you're not your body of the temple of the Holy Ghost, which you have of God. You're not your own. You're bought with a price. If a man defile the temple of the Holy Ghost, him shall God destroy. That ain't written just to preachers. That's written to you. <laughs> oh, did you, have, you guys that do any preaching, haven't you made hospital visits for there's some, one, of your, one of your members there about 50 years old? And you come in that thing, you got a stink in that room like a put a blister in a brick wall at 40 feet and a bunch of cigarette butts lying around, dead cigarette butts in an ashtray, you know. Kissing the girl that smokes is kind of like licking an ashtray. <laughs> and you come in there and the guy's in the bed and you say, what's wrong? Well, I don't know exactly <laughs> what's wrong. <with> me. But <clears throat> they're making a few tests and... <laughs> Have a little bit of trouble with me. <laughs> I know what's wrong with me. He's dying. That's what's wrong with him. <laughs> I mean, look at here. See this? See this stuff here? That's charcoal. Have you got a chimney at home? You have a chimney sweep ever clean that thing out once in a while? So it doesn't build up on there? You know what happens when you smoke? That stuff builds up in your lungs. It's charcoal. You start with a lung about that big, and pretty soon it's about that big, and pretty soon about that big, and pretty soon about that big, and you're lying there going, <laughs> and that oxygen's in, what's the matter? You ain't got any lungs, man. You shouldn't take a breath like you. Your breathing should be like this, it ought to be. You ought to get down to there, see? I mean, the idea of saying that stuff doesn't hurt you. Well, what a thing, man. What a thing. Well, I came out of a church one time, lit up between the Sunday school and church, you know, like a lot of you Southern Baptists do, you know. 
cigarette butts over the front end of the church. He come by there and one, one, when his buddies came out after the Sunday school, he said, look here, boys, I'm smoking. They said, you're not smoking. The cigarette's smoking. You're just a sucker. <laughs> and I'll truth that. I'll truth that. Tobacco is a filthy weed. From the devil it doth proceed. It uh, bur- stains your fingers, burns your clothes, makes the chimney of your nose. <laughs> now, old Walt Garrison says, well, it's too good to smoke. I chew it. <laughs> He's a baseball pitcher. Do you ever think what a filthy habit that is? Think of that, man. Did you know a fly wouldn't land on that? <laughs> Have you ever seen some of the things that flies land on? <laughs> Would you put something in your mouth that a fly wouldn't land on? <laughs> All right, uh, pardon me, sir, you save. Yeah, get out of here, beat it. <laughs> That's one if you're a Christian. Yeah, I'm a Christian. What of it? I don't talk religion and politics. Oh, you really got the joy, joy down your heart, don't you, man? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I finally got saved, right? Before he saved, he said it's, uh, it's a temper. And after he gets saved, he calls it nerves, you know. It all amounts to the same thing. I fellow said to Billy Sunday one time, he said, uh, well, I, I have a bad temper, but he said, I just blow up. It's all over in a minute. And Billy said, so is a shotgun blast, but blows everything to smithereens. <laughs> One fellow said one time, he said, uh, talking about it, he said, uh, he said, uh, he said, he said, uh, you, you ought to control your temper about it. it was Je- uh, uh, Jackson, not, Sto- uh, not Stonewall, but the other Jackson, the other president, the president. He said, you ought to control your temper. And he said, shut up, you fool. I control more temper in a week than you do in a year. <laughs> well, the idea is, uh, uh, a thing is supposed to have temper. I mean, if, if you're a, 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 a blade that doesn't have temper, it won't, won't hold an edge. Now you get a good case, you get a, you get a case blade and get it and, uh, you get a good case blade and it'll hold an edge. And if that thing will hold an edge, it's a good, a good blade. In fact, it's supposed to have temper to it, but you're not supposed to, you're not supposed to lose your temper. All right. You say this fellow saved? You know this kind of fellow. Come home. Uh, Oh, uh, you know, door, and the church door to God, hallelujah, praise the Lord, come home. Wife, dinner ready yet? Oh, you say, have a night to sit down and kick the cats, you know, that kind of thing. The fellow say, it's kind of like before you get married. Before you get married, you go by and you knock the door and mother comes to the door. Is Susie is there? Oh, yes, yeah, she'll be ready in a minute. She's lying, you know. And she says, you don't mind waiting, do you? And you say, no, I don't mind waiting, you're lying. <laughs> And then she comes downstairs about five, ten minutes later and says, I'm sorry to keep you waiting. She's lying. Well, that courtship's just lying, you know what it is. And you get out there, you know, and you sit in the car and uh, you go and I open the door for her first. She comes in and you shut the door and walk around the side and sit down. Sorry, you comfortable? She says, yes. And you take that thing and just ease that thing, baby, like a baby buggy going off. Now you've been, now you've been married about five years. Your wife, you coming late every night, you know. She, I got to take care of the children, get the children ready for us. All you seven night, boom, 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 stomp down there, get out in your car, run, 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 you know, racing the motor, you know, beep, right the horn. <laughs> Here comes your wife down the stairs with a uh, hair looking like a battle flag and her dress looking like an accident going somewhere to happen. And she comes up the car and you just reach across the seat and open the door like that, you know, like to knock her eye teeth out. And before she gets uh, sat comfortably, you go, mm, shoot that thing out of there. That's what fellas do. You say, is he saved? Be fire to me, say it. <laughs> if he is, there he is. And ain't that a mess? Look at that thing I'm drawing. Isn't that a mess? You know what that is? That's the church of Jesus Christ. That's what an unsaved man sees when he looks at the church. He sees that. You say, well, are they saved? Well, I don't know whether they are or not. They say they are. Like I said, you know, everybody talking about heaven and in going there, see? But they say they're saved. Oh, and I, I stop this young man, uh, you know, this, I stop this young lady and I say, uh, pardon me, uh, young lady, are you saved? And he says, I'm not a lady, I'm a man. <laughs> I said, oh, well, you could have fooled me. I mean, back in the old days when they turned around, you knew what they were finally, but these days you don't even know that. They turn around and you're still wondering. Uh, out in California, they marry them. They say, do you take uh, you, whoever you are, to take whatever this is to be whatever you're trying to be? <laughs> I don't know what they're doing out there, man. I, I was eating at a restaurant up there in Livonia, Michigan, and uh, eating up there, and, and something waiting on me one morning up there. Something, I don't know what it was, man. 
It was a mystery program. <laughs> I mean, I, I, honestly, God, if I was held to account right this minute for what that was that waited on me for about 20 minutes, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you. I look at the top, I say, it's a, it's a man. I look down at the chest, I say, that's a woman. I look down at the body, I say, it's a man. I look down at the legs, it's a woman. <laughs> I don't know what it is. So, there must be aliens from outer space, you know. They're kind of like, they're kind of like Michael Jackson, you know. You know, they ain't black, and they ain't white, and they ain't male, and they ain't female, and they ain't kids, and they ain't grown up. You know what they are. They're just things, you know. I stopped a fellow downtown one time and asked him about his soul, and he said he was saved. And I said, I'm going to ask you something. You know, he's about five feet, five feet ten, and here for six feet two. <laughs> and I asked him, I said, uh, I said, uh, what are you dressing like that? How, how come you want to look like a woman? So well, I'm a man. You better believe it. I said, I didn't say you weren't. I said, why do you want to look like a woman? And he said, well, uh, I'm a fifth degree Dan Bell, and boy, if you don't think I'm a man, just try me for size. I said, are you deaf? I said, I asked you twice, what do you want to look like a woman for? He never, he never answered me. That's strange, isn't it? You know, I don't, uh, I, I still pump a little iron, you know, a little, very little, you know. When you get my age, it isn't bodybuilding, it's care and maintenance. <laughs> 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 and I do, I do my own, I, live, I do my own weights, my own house, but I used to go to the spa a good bit. And there was something that always bothered me. I never could figure it out. You see these guys, you know, King Kong, man, 19 inch, inch you know, bench pressing 450 pounds, you know. Some of those guys stand out all day in front of the mirror, you know. <laughs> some, of, <laughs> some of them do more than that than they do pushing iron, you know. But you see some monster with his shoulders run out of his ears, and he goes back in the shower room after he comes out. He has this, uh, uh, oh, uh, oh, yeah, a hair blower. He has this. Yeah, and the guys, here's King Kong sitting there going. I don't know what that is. I never got that thing figured out yet. <laughs> isn't that a crew? My, my, isn't that a crew? I'll put one more in here. Pardon me, madam, are you saved? Yes, I'm saved. You know you're saved. I was born again. Give the date. You go to church? Yes. You're tired? Yeah. You read your Bible? Yeah. You pray? Yeah. You help out with the teaching school? Yes. Fine, wonderful, wonderful. Bless God. I finally got me a real Christian here. I say, mm -hmm, what is it? Look at that tongue. <laughs> eh, oh. <laughs> Sam Jones said some have a tongue, some women have a tongue so long they can sit in the living room and lick a skillet clean in the kitchen. <laughs> now you say, is that, is that a Christian? I don't know. I'll tell you one thing, if you go home and take a Bible and get you a highlighter and go through your Bible, You'll find the sins of speech are mentioned more times than any sin in the Bible outside of idolatry. Now, I know Christians, and I say I know them. I mean, I know them. Uh, it's been hard for me to get to know them and live with them, but I've had to learn it just like they've had to learn to live with me. And so uh, there's some things about Christians I don't understand, but I know Christians. Now, this is the first time I've ever been in this church, but I've been to 400 others. And some of them 20 and 30 members, and some of them 4,000 and 6,000 members for 54 years. I ought to know something about you Christians. After 54 years, and I know you. I know you. You quit your drinking, quit your smoking, quit your bingo, and quit your cussing, quit your pornography, and then you make up for it with your mouth. Yeah. I'm telling you something, out there in the world, they're watching this church. You're on the North Shore going around here. You got a lot of folks watching you around here. You know what they're going to watch you for? I know what they all want. I can draw you a circle around this building here 24,000 miles and I can tell you what every man, woman, and child in that circle is trying to do. You say what? They're trying to find happiness. All of them. You know what they're watching you for? To see if you're happy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And if you go out here and gripe and gripe and gripe and gripe and gripe, they won't be coming to this place. They figure you ain't got any more than they got. I know them. I know them. They'll watch you. See how you make out. Oh, the parking lot looks like a minefield, and somebody bit my baby, bit my baby in the nursery, and I don't like the color of the carpet, and the specials weren't very good today, and I, I know Christians. You belly ache is what you do, you belly ache. And uh, I'm not very sympathetic with you. I have a hard time with my own people. I'll be going out this summer, every summer I go out, and I preach to anywhere from 12 to 14 prisons in Florida, and me and uh, the former uh, captain of the Jacksonville police, we get us kind of a junket going with a van, get a board like this and carry around the prisoners and go in there and preach to the prisoners. 
We have a time of it. We have a time of it. When I come back from one of those things after preaching those prisoners and see my own folks sitting there like I see you sitting here right now, with your shirts on, your ties on, your clean clothes, and money in your back pocket, and food in your belly, and a car out there, I get sick. I mean, I come up, look at my people, and I say, I think, what are you doing here? You don't eat nothing. <laughs> That's a kind of wrong attitude, better attitude, but you can't, better attitude, but you can't help it. I'm preaching to guys who lost their wife, and their kids, and their family, and their job, and their money, and their home, and their friends, and their relatives, and their health, and their life. Double lifers. You don't have to tell them folks as soon as they know the sinners. They react to the gospel ten times as well as you react to it. A bunch of them blacks, boy. I mean, 80% of any jail population black. A little black boy come in and he says, I sure do. I sure was glad that you folks got to bring them chick tracks in here because our chapter here don't let us bring in them chick tracks. And he said, if you hadn't brought them in, I wouldn't have got them. And I need them for my patients up in the AIDS ward. And I said, the AIDS ward? He said, uh, yes, sir. I said, uh, you work in the AIDS ward? He said, yes, sir. I said, ain't that kind of dangerous? And he smiled and said, you mean I might get home quicker? That ain't how some of you folks think. I've seen that stuff all the time, man. I would preach those blacks down there and some old black down the front row would say, what'd you say? And I repeated it to him. And he said, what'd you mean by that? And I explained it. He says, thank you. <laughs> and go on preaching. <laughs> I preached the other day. And I said, I think the Lord is going to come real soon. And I said, I don't think you fellas are going to do any hard time. You guys are going to do more than two years. I don't think you're going to do two years. And I said, I could be wrong. I don't want to set any dates. But the way things are going outside, I said, boy, you're going to hear the sound of the trumpet. You guys that are saved are going to go out of here. They're going to be the biggest jailbreak you ever saw. <laughs> but you see, those folks have a need. They have a need. Now, this, what I can understand about the Christians is this. I, I'm an army family, and I know what infantry, what the kind of thing is like. And what I can understand, those guys I was with for four years in the regular army back in World War II, most of those fellows were godless, depraved, cussing, fighting, gambling, thieving, bunch of roughnecks, but they could take it. They could take it. And you Christians can't take it. Oh, there are preachers in this country that don't think I'm even saved. How many ever heard that for them? So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They say, what is your language? Well, listen, I was a man 27 years before I was a preacher, and I didn't suddenly change into something overnight when I got saved. I talk here like I talk in my house or in the bedroom or the bathroom or talking a deer hunt or a, 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 a dove shoot or kicking up quail or catching mullet with a net. And what I can understand about you, you've got the greatest book in the world, you've got the greatest Savior in the world, you've got the Holy Spirit indwelling your body, you got a perfect authority to go by. You got a God who promised to meet all your need, and you got a retirement at the old folks' home that won't quit. <laughs> New Jerusalem. The preacher said, and the preacher said, and so and so talking about me. Never can understand it. I don't understand it right now. Right this minute, I don't understand it. Make up for that big mouth. He says, a hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor. You know what he says? He says, life and death are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You know what he says? He said, oh, once a man's heart, his mouth speaks. And that stuff is just over and over again. You say, is she saved? I don't know. Say she is. Now, there they are. Ain't that a crew? Ain't that a crew? See this girl here? I'm, I'm ashamed to draw her face. I'm not even going to draw it. I'm just going to leave it blank. You say, Why? Well, she goes to church, she prays, she reads the Bible, you know, and that kind of thing. But she wouldn't walk around the block to tell the sinner how to get saved. Do you mean to tell me you can be saved and get your bleeding feet off the hot pavements of hell and keep your mouth shut about it? Well, maybe you can. I don't see how you can. I don't understand it. Southerners are bad about that. The good old boys down the south say, well, I believe in living it, preacher. I don't believe in talking about it. Everybody talking about having been going there. I believe in living it, you know. But I don't do much talking about it. No, I, I know what they talk about. They talk about what they like to talk about. 
They'll sit around there by the hour, you know. We're out there in this bass pond, them lily pads out there. I was using this yellowtail sally and got this hookless on it. And I was, got me a little pork rind there. And I was coming through this place and I, I think I was about a six pound test line. They're going like that all day. And I was 10 point. I was up in that day in the, in the deer stand. I've been watching. Sun just about up. Ain't seen nothing but dough all morning. Boy, about that time. I look around behind my the prettiest 10 point. Blab, listen. Out of the abundance of a man's heart, his mouth speaks. And if Christ is in you, he ought to be coming out of your mouth. No matter how you're living. And that's why some of you don't ever witness. He didn't say, let your work shine before men. They may see your light. He said, let your light, that's Christ, shine before men. They may see your works. Now some of you birds, I know why you don't witness much, because you're, you don't want folks looking at you too close. And if you really get open your mouth for Christ, they're going to look at you. They're going to check you out, aren't they? Aren't they? Mm, aren't they? Yeah, they are. You're worried about that. You say, well, maybe you are. Maybe you are. Maybe you are. I didn't say you weren't. I said, if it is, there it is. Now, there they are. They walk along the pilgrim pathway, and the world says, come in. And the juke joints say, come in. And the disco say, come in. And the United Nations says, come in. And the convention say, come in. And the fellowship say, come in. And God says, come out, come out from among them and be separate. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and you shall be son and daughters to me, saith the Lord Almighty. The word for church is ecclesia. Do you know what that means? That means a call out, out, call out assembly. Walking on the pilgrim pathway, uh, how they say, well, I don't know, everybody talking about heaven and going there, but they say they are. There they go. They go along the pilgrim pathway. Now, uh, what's up here? Well, here's Calvary. Christ died for your sins, according to the Scriptures, and was buried. And the third day he rose again from the dead, according to the Scriptures. He says, if a man wants to follow me, let him take up his cross. Brethren, the trick is not to see how much you get away with before you sin. The question is, what you, can you deny yourself to follow him? Let him deny himself. Ooh. Folks don't like to hear that. I don't like to preach it. I'm just like you. I'm in love with myself. <laughs> I think about my flesh getting tortured or hurt. I don't care for it a bit. Christ said, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Here's Christ. He in the court in the scripture was buried and the third day he rose again from the dead. That is, he's alive. Down there in Pensacola, a junior high school teacher one time was talking to her pupils and she was trying to get them interested in history and stuff. And she said, write me down a, a, a list of uh, uh, who you consider to be the three greatest li living men today. And they wrote down a list, you know, with stuff on it, you know, JFK and Billy Graham, you know, and Albert Schweitzer and Mother Teresa and a bunch of junk. And one kid wrote down Jesus Christ. And the teacher said, honey, that's a good idea what you had there, but I said living. <laughs> and that kid said, he is living. <laughs> <laughs> that teacher had something to learn. Oh, and here's Christ. He is the roast my dad, and you know what he does? He points his finger right down that old sinner's face, and he says, you. And blessed is the man that knows when God is talking with him. Our trouble is we always think he's talking to somebody else. Our trouble is when the preaching starts, it's uh, you know, her, it's him, it's the, that, those, them, and God says, it's you. I count the happiest day in my life about uh, March uh, 15th or 16th, 1949, when I had with a college education and raised an Episcopalian and experienced with Catholicism and Buddhism and Taoism and Confucianism and Zoroastrianism and God knows what, was drinking myself to death. And I was in a flop house, 10 cents a bit of can and a can of spit in. And I was kneeling there in that dark room by myself praying. And the Holy Spirit put his finger right down my throat and said, you're going to hell. I will forget that. He didn't say Hades either. <laughs> he said hell. He said, you're going to hell. I'm kneeling there in the dark, and I'm looking through my past life, and where I'd been, what I'd said, what I'd done to people, and things, and I said to myself, yes, sir, boy, if every man is going to make it, you're going to make it. You qualify, man. You're going to make it. You're going to get the hell as as you're kneeling here. I look around the room trying to find somebody to refer the message to, but there was nobody there but me, <laughs> and the Lord said, you got to find Christ tonight. I found him that night. I got saved with nobody doing me at all, running around the dark trying to find Christ, reading a stolen Bible. 
You want to you want to read why believe about that book? Why I do? Because I see through reading that thing when nobody was there. That book is loaded. I know it. But you take that thing right there. I look around for somebody else, and the Lord said, "You." All right, He said, "You." He said, "You're lost. You're going to hell. You need to come to me. Come unto me, all you that labor or heavy laden, and I'll give you rest." Who that cometh to me, I don't know why it's cast out. You will not come to me that you might have eternal life. He said, you need to come to me. That's the invitation. And you know what this fellow says? I'm this invitation to him. He's not talking to somebody else. If you're going to hide behind a hypocrite in the church, he's got to be bigger than you are to hide. When I compare, when I want to see how I'm growing spiritually, there's something I never do. I never compare myself with anybody in my congregation. Never. I give me a, I give me a big one like Luther or Wesley or Richard Vernbron or Harlan Popoff or J. Frank Norris. I give me a big one to compare myself with. As long as you're comparing yourself with folks inferior to you, you'll be just feeling comfortable when you have no right to be comfortable. <laughs> he says, you, he says, come on, come to me, all you to labor heavy laden, then I'll give you rest. And this fellow says, nothing doing, nothing doing. He says, they, now did you get that? Did you get that? God said, you. And he says, they, that, this, these, them, those. He says, they aren't any cleaner. Now who's judging now? Did you ever hear these unfallible people, unsafe people say, judge not, let's see be judged. Well, you're judging yourself. They aren't any cleaner than I am. And that's why the world is filled of or hell is filled with thousands of American men. They're afraid if they get saved and they don't live right, people talk about them, call them hypocrites. So they just go to hell trying to live a good life. You can't get to heaven by living a good life. Now see this fellow here? I may take a little uh, snort once in a while, but at least I don't go around shooting my mouth off and sick of my nose and everybody's business. This lady here, I may enjoy some good TV program, at least I don't drink like some Christians. Lady here, I may like a little hand or, you know, rummy for, you know, relaxation, but at least I don't go around, you know, smoking. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirits. They comparing themselves among themselves, measuring themselves by themselves, are not wise. So then, every one of us, Romans 14, 12, should give account of himself to God. Now, maybe I haven't kicked over all the rocks and seen all the ones crawling around underneath them. But maybe you're up there somewhere. And you give something about this. How, how can we always say, every head bowed and every eye shut? Now, why, why do that? Is somebody going to steal something out of your pocket while you got your eyes closed or something? <laughs> you know why we do that? Because when you close your eyes, you can't see anything material. And the things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are unseen are eternal. We do that to cut you off. So you won't see me or see the platform or see the picture. you just be you and God sitting there. Now, brethren, you can handle it any way you want to. But someday, as sure as I'm looking you in the face, in hockey they call it one-on-one. -on -one. It's a face-off. You know what that means? Just you and one other guy. And one day, you're going to stand there, as sure as I'm standing here right now, and face your Savior, if you're saved, and you and him are going to have it out. And your mom ain't going to be there. And your wife ain't going to be there. And your husband ain't going to be there. It's going to be just you. Just you. I can't live it for you. I can't solve your problems. I'll be going here a couple of days. You may never see me again. You're going to have to settle it with him. We try to get you to do it before you die. All right, let's bow our heads for prayer. Now, Father, I pray the Holy Spirit of God might speak to this congregation. And I'm sure you have some of your choice of saints here. And I'm sure you have others that are not in fellowship with you right now. I know you have some here that are trying real hard and they're just weak. The years of sin have weakened them. They're, they want to do better than they're doing and haven't been able to do it. And I pray them and undertake. I can't do a thing, Lord. Us preachers, you called us to talk, and that's all we've been doing. That's all I've been doing. That's what you told us to do. You said it pleased God by the foolish of preaching to save them and believe. And I know Heavenly Father is going to use what I've said, but I can't, I can't straighten anybody out. And you'll have to do it. And I want to hit the bow and eyes are closed. I'd like to have our 
musician play something for us on the instrument there, and that's get your mind quiet a while and get it turned inward and examine yourself now, whether you be in the faith. Ask yourself these questions. Am I saved? When was I saved? Where was I saved? What was I saved from? We say saved. We're not talking about being saved from a drunkard's grave or a rescue mission or a, a hospital bed in the VD clinic. We're not talking about that. We're talking about when did I accept God's righteousness so I wouldn't face him in my own righteousness when I died? That ever happened? Now maybe I didn't call your number here this morning. Sometimes sins of omission are worse than sins of commission. But I've turned over a good many rocks here this morning. And as we close the service today, let me ask you this. As we close the service today, and I want to ask you to be in detail, but how many of you folks for this service this morning, you believe God has very definitely talked to you about either something you're going to have to give up or something you're going to have to start doing to please Him. I didn't say me or your pastor. We'd like it, but it's no good. It's got to be to please him. How many could raise a hand and say, Preacher, this morning God taught me about some things and God given me grace. I'm going to try to make them right. Would you raise a hand? Would you raise a hand? Thank you, many hands. Thank you, many hands. Good. All right, Father, honor your word and enable these, give them the grace they need to confirm their vows. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, I'm going to turn over to your pastor and let him conclude the service of the Lord. Come ahead. Let's everyone stand if you would keep your head.